staff and students. And thank you again for joining me today for the fall 2020 welcome. This time is traditionally set aside each year to regather as a campus community, to reaffirm our collective mission to serve our students and to work excellently together on their behalf. We do that again today, albeit remotely, as is the current standard with large gatherings such as this. Some of today's fall welcome will be very familiar. You will recognize award recipients. You'll look back a bit on the past year and we'll talk about the year ahead, a year like none of us have ever experienced. However, I also want to outline a vision for the institution ahead. We truly have a proud past and a strong future, as our seal describes, words that are now being put to the test. As they are, it is just as important for me to share what is on my heart and give a perspective on how we are rising to the occasion and truly living our calling. As these days challenge us and bring anxiety, I want to give us all perspective on how far we have come and why I know we will succeed in the year ahead and beyond. First, I wanna share my deepest appreciation and credit to the professionals and staff that have made this moment possible. I am genuinely inspired by all of your incredible work. We could not be serving students safely without the nonstop work that has taken place from the spring semester through the summer to our restart for the fall. We simply would not be where we are in our ability to welcome back students without you. So you have my deepest and most sincere thank you. Together, we crafted a plan approved by the state and SUNY. This folded in ideas, suggestions, and drafts of literally scores of you. That planning was lived out day by day at the department and individual levels. There are simply too many of you, too many departments to recognize individually. The Herculean effort involved everything from retrofitting rooms, moving furniture and extensive cleaning, to reworking the class schedule, staying up to date on public health guidance, and communicating all of it to, to a range of groups. Many people went without summer vacation. The number of answers given to parents, students, and staff were outpaced at times only by the questions we received. This unprecedented effort makes me proud to be here and proud to be counted among you. This work, as with everything we do, ultimately serves our students. We have a strong future because of this clear focus. The spring semester was called the asterisk semester, an aberration that some thought would be over by the summer. It was at our traditional spring break when we hit what became the end of on-campus instruction. Despite the abrupt shift, our effort, efforts were exemplary as we continue to move the college forward and meet our vision to be a model comprehensive college with a student-centered approach to higher education. What we did in March helped us innovate and embrace distance, distance service and elevate student support. But that's not all we did. We held our very first speak out session where students shared with administration, department chairs and deans their experiences at SUNY Plattsburgh, their calls to action, and demands for systemic change. In the midst of all of our challenges, we hosted a virtual speak back gathering on May the 8th with more than 100 faculty, students, and staff in attendance. This allowed us as an institution to reflect and respond to students' calls for change, an important campus milestone. This included enhanced student conduct board recruitment efforts to both broaden and diversify membership and now all new students are sharing a common orientation experience this summer. Prior to the end of the spring semester, a years long effort to revise general education requirements was completed and the Cardinal Core curriculum was passed by the Faculty Senate. We held a virtual commencement ceremony to recognize more than 1000 graduates complete with bagpipes and the Plattsburgh State Gospel Choir. While we were not in person, it exemplified the spirit of care that would take us through the summer to this moment today. I'm also pleased to report that we raised money to directly support our students through the Plattsburgh College Foundation's COVID-19 Emergency Response Fund. I'm so pleased to announce today that this fundraising effort was also able to take advantage of a SUNY $50,000 donor match to better assist our students with their needs this fall. To each of our contributors, you have my heartfelt thanks. We are still in the midst of the COVID event and the challenges it presents. As we restart, we are fortunate to be in a region, in a state, 
where COVID-19 and adherence to masking and distancing was even more the rule than not. We will remain vigilant, careful, and responsive to all of your concerns and not taking any of this for granted. While we are prepared to shift fully to remote learning should that be required, I am extremely optimistic we can restart in a way that is safe, serves our students in and out of the classroom, and demonstrates who we are as SUNY Plattsburgh Cardinals. It is in fact why we are going to so much effort at this time. We know being on campus provides the best support for our students, many of whom are first generation. They are more likely to stay in college with our help and make a difference in the life they choose. This is what we do, and we will do our best for them every single day. As we continue to return to campus, students, faculty, staff, health and safety is truly our first priority. And it has been from initial planning to now. Keeping this community safe, secure, and being vigilant together. This includes completing the daily health screening form, something I do every day as well. Classrooms were evaluated this summer for density. Furniture was moved and adjusted. You have noticed new signage, retrofitting with plexiglass and other physical changes across the campus. The development of our social distancing and face covering policy, gathering and event restrictions and communication, screening, testing and tracing protocols are also part of all this detailed work. We have secured sufficient personal protective equipment, PPE, cleaning supplies and high quality MERV 13 air filters. And speaking of PPP, PPE, please carry a face covering with you at all times when on campus. We changed the academic calendar, we adjusted the teaching labs, and we aligned all of this with the Student Health and Counseling Center, the local health department, and public officials. To avoid the spread of COVID-19, personal responsibility is paramount and everyone can model healthy behavior and influence peers. Your supervisor, human resources, resource services, and the Office of Student Conduct can take your reports. The university police should be contacted immediately in the event of egregious infractions. Details of all of this are outlined online in the full restart plan. The phased in return of on campus work culminated with the full opening this past Monday. With all of this, we continue to provide options for those employees that are in a high risk category or live with someone who is. Those employees can now complete the request for reasonable accommodation, COVID medical form. Additionally, as local K-12 schools are detailing their plans for the upcoming year, we recognize the anxiety and uncertainty around childcare for those children who may be learning remotely. I'm also proud to say that SUNY Plattsburgh is committed to supporting our employees affected by these challenges. To address this, we developed a similar form for classified and professional employees who have school-aged children. On campus and off campus, our students are being told quite clearly of the importance of masking and social distancing. This will be a priority all semester long. In terms of students' enrollment in classes, I'm pleased to inform you that fall enrollment looks to be about 3% higher than we expected, with more than 5,000 students enrolled at this moment. This comes as about half our fall classes are scheduled to be in remote modality about one third are set to be fully face to face and the remainder are being offered in a hybrid modality. We estimate 25% of our students are taking fully online course loads. These students will largely not be coming to Plattsburgh, though some will. Much work by the faculty and academic affairs went into developing our new class schedule based on the available classroom listings. This included detailed work with the deans, department chairs, and the teaching faculty, as well as, as well as academic affairs areas and our new provost, Dr. Ann Herzog. This included answering a plethora of questions and changing as needed. In terms of new students, we are welcoming nearly 1,000 domestic first year students, nearly 400 transfer students, and approximately 250 graduate students. Additionally, almost 50 international students join us this year. I want to commend the work of admissions and all other offices who put so much work into bringing in the next class. This included hosting virtual open houses and providing critical assistance to families who have found a traditional on-campus visit so important. Serving on continuing and graduate, graduating students including, included processing 
$2.6 million in federal CARES Act funds earmarked for their benefit. Grants of $250, $1,200 and more were delivered to eligible students based on a formula that assessed need and incurred expenses. More than 3,500 students were eligible for CARES funds. The college's plans for CARES payments required state and system approval, and then the funds needed to be transferred to the college, a process that took a few months. I'm most proud that SUNY Plattsburgh was among the first state colleges to submit a plan and disperse funds. When we went remote in March, more than $7.4 million was refunded to students for housing, meals, room and board, and fees. A portion of this will be offset with the CARES Act funding. When these dollars arrive, however, nearly $5 million will not be covered. How much of our core operations will be funded this year remains an open question. The college's core operating budget is funded by two main revenue streams, direct state and student tuition. Direct state support has remained flat over a number of years. And while it is viewed as a reoccurring and ongoing commitment, New York's challenged fiscal situation may reduce our fiscal year 2020-2021 allocation. With such uncertainty around the budget, we are operating on our six month budget plan for expenses and disbursements. We are also maintaining a limitation of hiring and spending in areas such as supplies to travel and equipment. We need to remain careful with our precious resources and we'll, we will share more about this as we move into September. What I know now is what we do is as important as ever. You can see that driving down Ruger Street this week, or like I have been doing, walking down Ruger Street and meeting our most newest class of Cardinals and their families. These are students like Isabella, an English major from Queens. She told me that everyone she's met has been helpful and she loves the feel of the campus and she's excited to bring her studies. Or David, an entrepreneurship major from Tampa, Florida, who chose our college for athletics and cited how nice and welcoming we all are. And Hannah, an environmental geoscience major from Rochester, who loves the beauty of the North Country and chose us because of our strength in STEM field education. She knows that SUNY Plattsburgh is a good fit for her. They and other students have moved in at approximately 300 per day since Tuesday in two shifts. This has broke up traffic and lower density. We expect 1,700 students will be in our residence halls down from about 2,200 in a typical fall semester. But we are a residential college and our service to students extends here. The residence halls will have limited access and designated isolation and quarantine space for such needs. We expect, however careful and detailed we are, some positive cases to occur. It is not if, but when. That is simply where we are as a nation. To mitigate this, we have advanced education with the Cardinal Pledge, which you, you will see across campus and in communications. We have also reduced density in dining halls with changes in procedures and seating. Community standards will be enforced with the student conduct policy and its application off campus as well. And I wanna appreciate, ex basically express my appreciation to the outreach work of university police and the enrollment services and success with its new president, Lizzie Wildhop. While the semester is in a time like no other, so is our community, our state and nation. It is at a time of heightened activism by students and heightened expectations on campus leadership and each of us on matters of equity and inclusion. Words do not matter. What matters is listening, doing, and changing. Over the summer, affinity spaces and digital brave spaces were made available to students and our campus community as we process the murder of George Floyd and other disturbing national events. We will continue to build partnerships with students and foster institutional accountability through continued engagements each semester in the form of community listening sessions. This will build on the Speak series from the spring. Led by Dr. Michelle Cromwell, Vice President for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, we are advancing an all SET campaign to achieve inclusive excellence. The acronym SET or SET stands for student-centered, equity-minded, and trauma-informed. A comprehensive education campaign related to all set to educate administrators, faculty, and staff has already begun. 
In the short time that I've been here, I am constantly reminded that the college is all about being here for our students. Today, I am pleased to have the opportunity to highlight and celebrate individuals who embody the spirit and goals of the college and recognize six award recipients. On behalf of the Plattsburgh Alumni Association, I'm pleased to present the 2020 Faculty or Staff Impact Awards. First, to Dr. Rajas Sunasi, Associate Professor of Chemistry, and Ms. Sarah Richmond, graduate 87, recently retired from the EOP or the Educational Opportunity Program Counseling. The Faculty or Staff Impact Award recognizes faculty or staff members, current or retired, who have had a major and lasting positive impact on the life of alumni. Dr. Sunasi joined the Department of Chemistry at SUNY Plattsburgh in 2013, and since then has contributed immensely to the growth of his students. He has been recognized both nationally and internationally with developing the field of cellulose nanotechnology for biomedical applications, and has received numerous grants and research awards. Alumnus, Mr. Christopher Smith, 2018 had this to say about Dr. Sunasi. What distinguishes him from others is his ability to act not only as an advisor, but as a mentor. As a principal investigator of his own research lab, Dr. Sunasi has men mentored 52 undergraduate students and led seven undergraduate thesis projects where individual students have planned and executed independent research projects that are very similar to graduate level work. In addition to helping students develop the technical lab skills needed to progress in their respective fields, Dr. Sunasi makes a constant effort to help advance well-rounded scientists by allowing students to publish journal articles, present at national and regional conferences, and participate in scientific outreach activities. Ms. Richmond served as an EOP counselor at SUNY Plattsburgh for 18 years and worked at the college for 23 years passionately offering support and guidance to numerous students from underprivileged backgrounds. Alumnus Carmen, Carmen Horlacher, 88, had this to say about Ms. Richmond. Many times I did not have the confidence or self-esteem during my studies and my journey in becoming the first generation in my family to graduate from college. Going to SUNY Plattsburgh was the best decision I ever made in my life, but it was my EOP counselor, Sarah Richmond, who truly guided me and shaped who I am today. Sarah was there for us always, giving us great advice on how to handle ourselves in the real world. Sarah always had a listening ear and helped guide me through my college journey. It didn't matter if I was an academic, if, if it was academic or personal guidance I needed, she was there 100% and then some. So congratulations to Dr. Sunasi and Ms. Richmond. Next, I want to recognize four people with the SUNY Chancellor's Awards for Excellence. While they have already received their medals, it is important to highlight their work here today. First is Dr. Kurt Gerbich, Associate Professor of Earth and Environmental Science for Excellence in Faculty Service. This award is made to State University of New York faculty members who have provided outstanding achievement, leadership, outreach, and community service over multiple years and in a variety of areas. His work since joining the faculty in 2010 is an exemplar of the high standard established by SUNY for this award. As a well-regarded associate professor, a willing participant on campus committees, and a respected collaborator across disciplines, his contributions to student success is what makes SUNY Plattsburgh distinctive. Next, Karen Glushko, Adjunct Lecturer Psychology for Excellence in Adjunct Teaching. This award recognizes consistently superior teaching at the graduate, undergraduate, or professional level in keeping with the State University of New York's commitment to providing its students with instruction of the highest quality. Her work since joining the adjunct faculty in 2000 is an exemplar of the high standard established by SUNY for the award. As a well-regarded instructor, a mentor to countless students, and a respected professional in the Beekman Town Central School District for nearly three decades, her work is a pride point for our campus. Third, Dr. Jeff Hornerbrook, Professor of History for Excellence in Teaching. This award recognizes consistently superior teaching at the graduate, undergraduate, or professional level in keeping with the State University of New York's commitment 
to providing its students with instruction of the highest quality. His work since June, joining the faculty in 1997 is also an exemplar of the high standard established by SUNY for the award. As an energetic instructor covering a range of history classes, a valued leader among our faculty and a respected scholar, his contribution to student success is highly valued, is valued greatly. Finally, Janet Manor, Administrative Assistant One, Biological Sciences at the Lake Champlain Research Institute is receiving the Excellence in Classified Service Acknowledgement. This award recognized recognizes classified staff across the State University of New York for consistently demonstrating superb performance. Her work since joining the campus in 2000 is an exemplar of the high standard established by SUNY for the award. As a caring professional respected for her attention to detail and tireless assistance to others, we remain indebted to her work. Thanks to each of our award recipients, I'm honored to be your colleague. As we, we reflect on these wonderful employees and focus deeply on the fall, our eye must also be on the spring in the years ahead. While so many of you have seen so much over the years at SUNY Plattsburgh, my fully face-to-face -face time was a little more than six weeks. In that time, I met with you at informal coffees and gatherings. I will continue listening and learning this fall, albeit at times in different formats. My desire is to meet with faculty, department chairs, professional and support staff, and students as much as I am able. We will also move forward on forging our future. Our Middle States reaccreditation is now underway and will grow this fall as we advance the self-study process. This is one part of this important work. Finally, we will do all of this together. A college is not just a president, not just administration, and not just the faculty. It is each of us and all of us. We know much of the fall will not be normal. Our Cardinal Athletics teams are sadly on pause, but we are all pointing forward and all longing for the day this campus is more of what we know it to be. Until it is, we will each do our part. It is that commitment, your commitment, that gives me the confidence we will never stop serving and making a difference for these students and all those who will follow them. As we wrap up this program, I will visit with many of you today at pre-semester meetings in our various schools. Also, I invite you to attend the annual matriculation ceremony for our new students. It will be held later today at 4 p.m., also in a virtual format. With that, I wanna thank you sincerely again for being here this morning. I wish, wish each of you a successful semester as we serve our students together. Be well. And thank you again for being Cardinals and being part of our journey to serve our students. Thank you.